Hi guys, John with you again, and it's time for another unboxing. So therefore, we're, we're starting another um, another project. We we'll call it a project, another build. And as usual, we start off with the unboxing. Then we do build update number one, where we get it made. Build update number two, and possibly even the third one, when we're doing the painting and detailing and uh, the weathering and all that. So this is part one of all that. This is the unboxing. Um, we're doing this uh, fabulous kit from Atelieri. Um The original kit came out in 1977. This is a 1980 rebox of it. Okay, and um, it's even been reboxed again. Yep, it's even reboxed again. And it's basically the same kit, the same tooling, and all that. It didn't do anything. All it did was uh, just change the boxes. I'm just looking here on um, scale mates. And according to Scalemates, this kit in its new version, okay, um, bum, 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 bum. you have to bear with me. Uh, in 2019, M1A1 Sherman is basically the same kit. Um, there's a couple of new parts in the 2019 version and they're mostly figures so it's basically the same kit since uh, 1977 and believe it or not I can remember where I was in 1977 yep. I used to be in the Boy Scouts and in 1977 in Ireland we had an international Boy Scout Jamboree and if anybody of you out there have ever been in the Boy Scouts you know what I'm talking about, a, a, a Jamboree and there was a jamboree in Ireland, it was on down in County Waterford, and it was called Jamborora, and that was in 1977. I still have memories of that, so uh, 1977 is one of those little, little kind of um, spark a light bulb years. When somebody mentions 1977, I goes, oh yes, I remember back in 1977. I remember where I was then. Uh, well, that was during the summer of 1977. So anyway, let's get down to the bench. We'll have a look at this kit. Um, we'll see what you get inside it. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Here's the box. And like I said, this is the uh, 1980 reboxing of it. That's quite the scale mates for that. Very, very handy uh, for anybody that's out there. If you want to check out when a uh, kit was built or what, when it originally came out and things like that, go on to Scalemates, scalemates.com, and uh, you can get all your info on that. Um, it's very easy to navigate and find what you're looking for. Believe me, you, I use it quite a lot. So anyway, let's get on to this one here. Here's the box of it. It's just a, the typical 80s um, Italieri boxing with a kind of a yellow banner across the top and the just an ordinary um, painting basically of um, of a Sherman and this is the uh, M4A1 okay allied standard tank it's got a 76 millimeter barrel okay on the side here it gives us some information both in in, uh, in French English German Italian uh, Dutch and Spanish just a little bit of a write up there on the, uh, the Sherman itself. Let me just zoom into that there and get it in the English. The Sherman, in its many ver versions, was the most widely used tank employed by the Allied forces in World War II. Even today, several armies are still using this formidable tank. More than 4,000, 40,000, should I say, M4s were produced. Now, when that says that uh, some you they're probably still in armies today. That was uh, printed back in 1980, which, as we know, was 40 years ago. Yeah, so 40 years ago they were still using them. Whether they're still using them now or not, that's another thing I doubt it, to be quite honest, which I really sincerely doubt it. So, anyway, what else have we got on the box on the side here? We just got a picture from the box art. Uh, this side here, then, we get more of that uh, information, but in... Um, I think that's the Swedish flag, Sweden, and Japanese, and uh, just two other kits then that they do. We've got the uh, the uh, kangaroo and the elephant. Okay, so that's the box art. No, no, 
your main information. It's kit number uh, 225, it's in 135th scale. Okay. So let's pop the box and we'll have a look at what we get inside. Okay, we get we get an instruction manual. We get this one screw, that's part of that screw, okay? We get one screw. We've got two set of decals so it's three sprues that's all we have and our tracks now they're rubber tracks but uh, if you look at them they are they are very stiff they are very very stiff tracks very stiff indeed now someone said to me before that you can kind of soften these tracks up with um, kind of putting them into once you get the shape you want once you once you get them joined Put them into hot water and kind of, you know, press them down like that and kind of in warm water in that shape. And they should kind of stay in that shape because sometimes it could be a bit too much pressure, but they are very, very stiff, I must say. Um, condition of the tracks, they're okay, the molding is okay, we don't get any of that extra molding, you know, these little nipples along the top of them, we don't have that. Um, yeah, okay, there's, there's our tracks anyway. So let's have a look at the sprues. Let's start off with this sprue here. So, okay. Now, i just move that to the side. Alright, this is our first sprue. It's, um, Tell us what sprue it is, believe it or not. No, it doesn't tell us what sprue it is. Uh, do you know what it is? It's a case of if it's like the airfix, the way the airfix do it, they number their parts from one right till the very end. Whereas the modern way of doing it is like to say this is sprue B, say, and it's B1, B2, B3. This is just gives the number of it. I'll just check there on the instructions. For that, we just pop it up. It's very, very easy to see. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't say which uh, which sprue it is. It just gives us the part number. Okay, so it, yeah, again, then it, it doesn't tell us which sprue is which. Um, although it does have a sort of a triangle, a circle. Square, okay, and, and the numbers here, as you can see, it's piece number 36 square. So, you know, our 36 triangle, should I say, sorry, and that will tell you on which sprue that it is if you want to go down that line. So, you got triangle, square, and circle. But anyway, this is the um, I think it's the circle one. They call it the circle one because it's got a circle thing there. Round the yoke on it. Um, and they all have that, so pencil my last on that one. <laughs> okay, so what do we get on this? We get our upper hull. All one nice big piece on it. Again, like the, um, the all, a lot of the older kits. And as you probably know me, I love the older kits. I think that they're a fabulous. Um, they wouldn't be say they wouldn't be up to it for a modern competition, maybe because of the parts not being, you know, um, rivet counter perfect. But uh, if you're just doing it like I am for a hobby and for enjoyment, then they're quite good. Yeah, they could go to a little bit more detail, you know, the more modern ones would have all these uh, the petrol caps you'd be fitting on yourself. Um, this piece here is probably in two or three pieces, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And uh, here we go. But uh, I must say, it is nicely molded. The plastic kind of feels, when you compare it to, say, to me, a plastic, it just feel, it feels cheap. That's a neat, that's a nice way of describing it. It just feel, it feels kind of a, a cheaper plastic than the Tamiya plastic. So anyway, here's our um, our upper deck. We've got um, thirty cal there, 
and we've got our tools. Okay, we've got our tools. We've got our side skirts. If you want to go putting them on, I prefer not to. Be honest with you. Hopefully, I can do it without putting on the side skirts. Uh, it's just a pers personal preference. I, um, I find that a lot of the, uh, if you go back into um, archive footage and things like that, it's one of the first things that sort of that went with the side skirts, whether they were uh, hazardous, as in, you know, they, they were just getting in the way, they were so light and things like that, they got caught in branches and things, but they're more hassled in, in trying to kind of keep them on than there was in just, say, first bit of branch of your cotton they just whipped it off and left it off I do not know anyway um, we've got our engine inspection hatch is in our way back the back door into the engine um, we've got a couple of uh, blocks there they seem to be the uh, track blocks we have the um, light guards, protectors, there, seem okay, God, so you want to be kind of careful in cutting them off now because the connections onto the sprue itself are quite uh, quite thick and like I said the, the plastic it feels kind of um, cheap as in, I don't know what you'd call it, tinsely, it's just the easiest way, an easy way to describe it. Okay, we've got a um, little bit of storage here. We've got a um, little submachine gun. We've got our uh, driver and um, what do you call it? The second spare driver. <laughs> the uh, machine gunner, the whole machine gunner. Um, we've got their hatches. Um, by the looks of it there, the rear mud guards, transmission cover, travel lock for the gun. So, the pieces are, you know, the, the, the moulding is actually quite nice in them, I must say. Even though the plastic, like I said, does feel kind of cheap, but, uh, yeah, the moulding seems okay. There's a tow rope. How that is going to work out, I do not know. Um, I tend to. It's oh, we 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 have it snapped here. But that's not that's not a problem. If I do decide to use it, it's quite easy to you know just to glue that back into spot. You'd be gluing it down to the uh, the base of the thing anyway. Um, I don't know if I'll go down the line of uh, making my own tore up or not. I may do, we'll see what this looks like, you know, when we get it off we'll have a closer, closer look at it. Um, it does feel to have a bit of flash and stuff on it, you know, just rubbing my hand off it there, I can kind of feel the, um, feel the flash on it, I don't know whether it will kind of really show up or not, but um, maybe flash is the wrong word, or maybe it's more of a kind of a seam line on it, but, um, there we go. You can see the, the moulding isn't really so neat on it. And it's quite easy to make your own tow ropes. It is quite easy. Um, I did a video on making tow ropes. Uh, also, if you go into a DIY store and get a picture hanging wire, usually it's that kind of thickness and it's braided as well, so you could use a bit of that. Um, we've also got our little exhausts. So that's the first sprue anyway. So, so far so good, it's not bad. Okay. We've got our second sprue, which is a little small sprue here. Um, it's mostly our turret parts. Okay. Our gun is in two pieces. So we're going to have great fun in, uh, in putting that together. Okay, the breech is already part of it and all. The breech is already in place. Um, we've got the uh, upper and lower portion of the turret, we've got the gun mantlet, we've got a figure here, okay, have a look at that figure, yeah, it's, it's 
that is one nasty looking figure if you don't mind me saying it looks uh, it looks um, it, it's typical for the era the figure I and mean, it kind of looks out of scale and everything doesn't it but uh, there's the figure if you want to go using the figure with it I won't be using the figure I'll be just going for the, uh, the model itself okay we've got our 50 cal um, we've got the Commander's Coppola with the, uh, the hatches. I do like the fact that it's got the, um, the vision block there, the periscope, on both the inside and the outside. So you could have the, uh, the hatch open if you want. We've got some uh, towing hooks. Apparently by the looks of that, either a piece broke off well handles actually now whether that's supposed to be kind of a half a handle or not I do not know because if you look at the other ones they are full pieces so whether it was a, a moulding error or not I do not know um, then a few more parts that I don't know what they're called I must just go check out that now and I'll be back in to you in two seconds Okay, back with you again, and yes, that part, um, it is supposed to be moulded like that, okay, see the way it's not sort of fully round, and I checked out, double checked there with the, um, the, with the, with the sprue map, there she is, part 91, and as you can see, it's not the, uh, it's not the full closed handle, so, it's not a, it's not a, um, molding problem okay and like I said there's all the rest of the parts you now for uh, the turret mostly all our turret parts okay now it seems nice I must admit I would like this to be a little bit more solid though it's just uh, it, it's you know the way that Tamiya do it they, they make they just make it a little bit more um, more solid but, but we'll see how it goes together anyway obviously and uh, we shouldn't have any problems with it. I can't foresee any problems. So, there's our second sprue. And finally we have our last sprue. Right, we've got the tub, which was parked there here. It was stuck on here. Um, yeah. It's just a standard tub lower deck no problems with that um, there's no flash in it anyway and no big uh, big problems with that most of it's going to be hidden anyway behind the uh, suspension and all that kind of good stuff so there's the tub 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 right here we are now to our uh, our bogies our suspension bogies and things as you can see there's a bit of flash there and here but they don't seem to be on the pieces. Not to, not, not to my viewing at the moment, anyway. Just tiny, yeah, tiny little bits. But you mean you're going to be cleaning them off anyway, you know? Um, even when there isn't flash, we always kind of give it a bit of a scraping because you're going to find uh, seam lines and things like that. But, um, yeah, there doesn't seem to be any, any, any major problems with them. So these are our. Uh, suspension bogies we've got um, what appears to be a multi-piece um, drive sprocket okay no, are they giving you two different types of drive sprockets I do not know but uh, looks quite um, quite kind of intrigued Okay, return rollers. Again, I can feel I can feel the flash on the top of them. You can see them. Yeah, there's just a little bit. So they'll all have to be cleaned off. But we're going to be cleaning them off anyway. I mean, you can kind of expect it on the older kits that you're going to get uh, bits of flash and stuff. There's more of it there. 
on those uh, Volute springs the VVSS or the VSVS vertical volute uh, suspension system or the HVSS isn't it? a horizontal volute suspension system and this is a V vertical volute and volute refers to the spring, the volute springs in other words they um, they, they go into each other as opposed to um, you know an ordinary spring that kind of meets meets itself you know, you know the wound spring and it, it just it compresses into the thing whereas the volute spring compresses into itself you know uh, you got a thin bit and a thick bit and the thin bit goes into the thick bit that, that's basically what a volute spring is um, yeah no problems no problems with that um, parts they all the molding all looks good in them the um, plastic like I said is it just feels cheap there is a bit of flesh on it um, but you know what to expect Italieri I never expect much from Italieri um, I have done a couple of Italieri kits in the past I haven't really been uh, over um, excited with them shall we say uh, I did the um, Italieri uh, Sherman with the, uh, uh, the the Fury Sherman, and that had major uh, a couple of major little uh, discrepancies by calling it the the the, um, the, 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 the Fury one because the storage that they gave didn't basically line up with what the storage was in the film. If, and my, my crib at the time was if you're going to call it something from a film then give then do that you know don't just sort of uh, take one off the shelf and say all right we'll stick in a couple of decals to say that it was the one from the film but don't give the extra little details that make it the one from the film but anyway that's I digress so I'm back to you again anyway all right we've got our decals no they're quite plain, but then again, do you know what I mean? That's that's really all. The Americans didn't really go. Oh, excuse me, go in for much further decals. They do seem a bit, um, uh, a bit shiny, but uh, like I said, I glass coat, then put on the, the decals, and then dull coat over that. Um, it doesn't seem to be too much carrier film on them. They seem to be quite, quite neat. Um, we'll see how they work. It has started to curl up a bit there from age. But, um, like I said, this kit is from 1980. So, you know, it's... And as we know, 1980 was 40 years ago. So, they have, they've held up grand for 40 years anyway, haven't they? So no, that's, that's basically it for the uh, the parts and the uh, the decals. So all we've left to do is we just have one quick look over the um, the instructions. Um, quick look at the steps to see if they're easy to follow. My usual thing: are they putting too many uh, steps into the one picture, which makes it very very confusing. Um, maybe not for say the experienced modeler, but if you're getting into modeling, modeling, and you buy you know your first kit or you're onto your fifth or sixth kit, and then you get uh, say instructions like say dragon instructions, where you've got uh, step one, you've about ninety little parts going into it, and the the directions aren't a hundred percent clear unless you actually literally know what you're doing. Um, you could get uh, quite easily distracted and end up doing the wrong thing and putting them in the wrong place and things but um, these seem to be okay there doesn't seem to be too many parts or too many uh, instructions in it um, as you can see here piece number one is telling you you're using parts one to part nine okay so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, you've got left and right bogies. 
so you're going to have three of each, three left and three right. Um, that was right about the, uh, the drive sprockets, you have an alternative. Uh, you can use either that one or that one. Um, so step two there is continuing on with the um, with the suspension. You've already made your suspension, now you're sticking it on. Um, step three, you're adding tow hitch, uh, your exhausts and air filters and things, the whole machine gun, side skirts if you're going to use the side skirts and like I said I'm going to try and not use them because I don't really like them being honest with you um, but we'll see we'll see you never know I might because there's many a time I've said in an unboxing oh, I'm not going to go down that road and there I am halfway through the build and there's John trotting down the road that he said he wouldn't go down but uh, we'll see we'll see uh, step five then we're adding in our bits and pieces with the uh, the hatch covers um, then six we're on to some more of the bits and pieces that go in there we've got that little uh, shelf storage box tray that goes onto the back of the vehicle we've got a couple of storage boxes that go into it as well um, then we're on to the, the main shooty thing and like I said it's in two halves it looks very very thin um, we could have a bit of fun with that not um, then we're finishing off the turret and just a little bit of storage so there doesn't seem to be you know any major um, amount of parts going on, like I said there is only three sprues anyway, um, but uh, the instructions are fair, fair easy to follow, very easy to follow. Okay so now we've got our uh, paint schemes and decal markings, um, it just says the colour of the tank is dark green. Um, so we've got the uh, 5th Corps, the 741st Tank Battalions, uh, Company A, Vehicle 7, D-Day Normandy, June 1944. So you can have a Normandy, a D-Day tank. Very nice, very nice indeed. Uh, you can have the 10th Armoured Division, 11th Tank Battalion, B Company B, Vehicle 15, in the Ardennes in 45. And uh, you can do it as a Marine Corps in the Pacific in 1944. So you have three options there. You've got from D-Day to uh, Battle of the Bulge. And you've also got um, the Marine version for um, 1944 in the Pacific. The Pacific. Okay. So that's basically that's, that's the unboxing more I can say about it. Um, we've looked at the parts, we've looked at the instructions, we've looked at the box art, we've looked at the decals, we've looked at the tracks, the stiff tracks, and then there, there's no bend in them whatsoever. Um, so next is the build. So stay tuned for the channel we will be building it. I'll be getting started on this very very shortly. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, don't forget you can hit the bell and by hitting the bell you'll be uh, notified as soon as I upload any more videos. Don't forget to join me and Abs, we're back. We're back with the uh, the bum on Mondays. So stay tuned for this week's bum. And uh, every week's bum from now on. Um, like we're back, it's like I said. Um, so, I've no more to say. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. If you have, thank you. Uh, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. Um, anything you want to ask me or anything you want to say stick it in the comments box below and uh, until then enjoy your modelling go out and buy yourself a kit build it
and enjoy it. It's John signing off. I'll catch you in the next one, lads. Stay safe. <laughs>